Hi guys, how are you doing today? Hope you are having a sunny day. Ready for some new drama from Ask a Lawyer? Let's go to the first one. About OP, who decided to invite her ex who cheated on her to her wedding because he's the son of her father's best friends. But, well, guess who he is bringing as his plus one? Listen to the story guys to find out, and of course to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. I, 28 female, got married to my best friend and the kindest man I've known last week after being together for six years. Everything was just downright perfect and beautiful, except for one tiny detail. My ex from when I was 21 was my dad's best friend's son. We will call him Max. Max and I were friends for eight years and dated for three. We broke up shortly after my birthday after he cheated on me with some girl from his college. I only found out when I visited him. He went on a rampage, okay, exaggeration, but you get the point, and started saying that he was in love with this girl and that he felt that I was manipulative. Mind you, this was also shortly after my miscarriage. I was pregnant and Max ignored any of my calls or texts for two weeks and didn't even bother to show up at the hospital even after his sister informed him. He was pretty emotionally aggressive, which I only realized after I met my husband, Dennis. I am still close to the family of my dad's best friend because they have been nothing but kind to me, even though their son is a jerk. His mother always hyped me up when we were dating and even after we broke up. So I wanted them to be there. I asked my dad if it'd be rude to leave out my ex from the invite that was going to the family as a whole. My dad said it wouldn't be rude, but might come off as a little petty. Dennis didn't see a problem with Max coming, so he asked me to just invite the whole family, plus two in case my ex and his brother wanted to bring someone along. His sister has her medical exam, so she already informed us that she wouldn't be able to participate. I sent the invite, and a week later they sent their RSVP. But I started to panic when I saw the name of the girl he cheated on me with as his plus one. It came as a shock, because his mom told me that Max and this girl had broken up soon after college ended. I was hyperventilating because somewhere it still hurts. He was the first guy I really got emotionally involved with and have only ever been with him and Dennis. I called my mom and dad and they asked me to just uninvite Max if his presence will ruin my big day and they're sure his friend's family would understand. I called up Max's mom and explained to her how it was affecting me and she said that she's doubtful it is possible since he still claims that he is no longer with that girl. She looks exactly like her. I could spot her even in a whole crowd. But she understands and would talk to Max. But she thinks it is unfair to uninvite over something that happened over seven years ago. I said okay, and then proceeded to uninvite all of them over text. My parents and brother think that I shouldn't have uninvited all of them, and what I did was rude and petty. Max's mother and my dad's best friend are also upset about my decision, but they say that they understand and still sent me a wedding gift. Some of the people in my dad's circle are calling me and Dennis a-holes and petty, for not having the people who have only shown me kindness and loved me like one of their own. Am I the a-hole? In my opinion, OP made the initial mistake by inviting Max. OP let her parents and fiancé talk her into this despite she was doubting. And OP could have invited everyone in the family but him by specifying that on the invite. It would have been understandable. But since OP invited him, she cannot dictate who he is going to bring as a plus one. I think that uninviting the whole family was a little bit extreme. And now let's see if the community agrees with me. Ocean Breeze says, Max's mom told you she understood, but then she thought it was unfair to uninvite him? So she obviously did not understand that her son cheating on you, and on top of it, bringing the girl he cheated with was wrong. No wonder you disinvited them, not the a-hole. Who tells a bride it's unfair to not want the guy that cheated on you at your wedding? And with the girl he cheated with? If it was their daughter, you can bet she would feel differently. They may be kind and love you, but regarding your wedding, she definitely didn't love you like her own. So disrespectful that people in your dad's circle are gossiping about it. Middle school behavior. Especially when the core reason Max's family was disinvited, they probably don't even know. Maleficent Cut says, Not the a-hole. It's your wedding, and I get your ex is their family. But if they can't understand why your ex shouldn't be invited, they are the problem. Cheating should never be tolerated. It's your special day. And if they are making it unbearable, it's fine to uninvite them. I would say maybe have a convo with them since you are close and truly explain how this is making you feel with no sugarcoating. But if they still don't understand, 100% uninvite them. 
So, due to a whole lot of TV show-worthy drama that's occurred in the last year, I now have a daughter who I never knew existed. It's a long story, and we don't have the word count for it. But I'll try to put in the information that's relevant. I, 47 male, have two sons, 30, 27, and one daughter, Lila, 22. I met my daughter before quarantine began, and because of lockdown, she ended up living with me and my sons when my state shut down. So over this time, we got extremely close. My wife died about 10 years ago, and it's only recently, two years, that I started dating my now girlfriend, 47 female, Kate. Kate has a daughter, Abby, 22 female, who I've known since she was a child. But we are not married, and Abby has a father who has always had majority custody of her. I'm friendly with Abby the way a parent's friend would be, but we do not have a stepdaughter-stepfather relationship. Last week, it was Lila's birthday, and we decided to have a small get-together, a few family members and Kate, Abby. I decided to get Lila something she has been telling me about forever. She told me she has always wanted a charm bracelet, one where she gets new charms on special occasions, something that is meaningful. She has gone on and on about this, so I decided to get her one for her birthday. I ended up getting her a gold Tiffany charm bracelet with a gold locket charm. This was engraved with her birthday and name. Inside was a picture of our little family. Her brothers also got her some gold charms that were also engraved with special messages. When she opened it, she cried, and it was a very touching moment for our family. Well, afterwards, Abby came to me and asked when she would get hers, since this is a family thing that all girls will get a charm bracelet. I let her know this was just a special present for Lila, but on her next birthday, I will get her a different bracelet, not charm bracelet. I thought that was it, until later when Lila came to me crying that Abby tried to take her bracelet because she's more family than Lila is, and Lila didn't deserve a family gift because of this. I assured Lila that Abby was wrong, and she was my daughter and a very important part of our family. This is the part where I may be the a-hole. I took Abby aside and lost it. I told Abby she was not my daughter and that she needed to leave Lila alone or she wouldn't be allowed over again. This of course made her mother upset and they both think I'm the a-hole. Lila also feels really bad because of everything that happened. I'm okay with Abby thinking I'm an a-hole, but I don't want Lila to ever think of me that way. And everyone involved is biased, so I'm here to get an unbiased opinion. Well, Lila is actually OP's daughter and OP gave an appropriate birthday gift. Abby is OP's girlfriend's daughter, who OP barely knows. Abby tried to steal OP's daughter's gift and told her that she was more family than Lila, a total and complete lie. Abby shouldn't be allowed around OP's home again without a heartfelt apology to OP and Lila. Kate should be more upset about what her daughter did than that. Abby isn't allowed around anymore. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Dio Rex Rat says, Not the a-hole. Abby isn't your daughter, and she just tried to steal your daughter's present and was horribly ugly to her. Her mother is wrong. Her daughter was wrong. Stand your ground. The last Basilope says, Not the a-hole. First off, 22 is old enough to know that just because someone else gets something, it doesn't mean she is entitled to get one too. Second, Abby isn't family, at least not yet. You're dating her mother, not married to her, and that is on top of the fact that she has lived with her father most of the time and has very little relationship with you. Third, Abby had no right to try to take Lila's bracelet. Again, she is a ducking adult and should know better. Stan and B says, Not the a-hole. The 22-year-old daughter of your girlfriend tried to steal a bracelet off the wrist of a member of your family. Abby, who you've known for all her life, suddenly has someone who's your real daughter appear in your life. It's understandable that might trigger jealousy without even getting to virus-constrained living conditions. But none of that is enough to excuse trying to rip a bracelet off someone else while telling her she's less a member of the family. Your fury is understandable. It would have been better not to have gone to the you're not my daughter line. But hell, she's a 22-year-old adult who should be able to process the fact that she seriously provoked you. My wife's husband cheated on her and left her 15 years ago. At this time, his daughter was 11 and didn't really understand what had happened. We met 13 years ago and moved in together shortly after. We have a son together and have a happy little family, but her daughter has never accepted me. Even after the troublesome teenage years with the you're not my real dad tantrums, she still only ever saw me as the guy that married her mother. Her father got back in contact when she was 18 and she has spent a lot of time bonding with him. I'm not going to force her to accept me as a father and provided support when she needed it. This included paying for her university and living costs so she could focus on her studies. After she graduated, I bought her a car as a present. 
there was no word of thanks or even show of affection. And every time she visits her mother, it's talking about how her father and what he's done for her lately. I realized a couple of years ago that I would never be accepted by her, and it's best not to bother trying anymore. I'm rather meticulous and download all my bank statements, as well as make notes of how much money I've spent on things. To date, I've spent just under £49,000 on my stepdaughter since she was 18. This isn't money from a joint account, but rather money I personally have spent, as her mother does not earn much. She's been dating a chap for a while now, and he proposed to her a couple of months ago. Her mother has been ecstatic, and every time she visits us, they're planning the wedding together. My wife is Scandinavian, and they both have their hearts set on a wedding in Norway, which, by the looks of it, is very expensive. At no point has anyone discussed this wedding with me, nor have they discussed how it's going to be paid for. I only know the cost because I looked up things they were discussing together. Last weekend, my stepdaughter was visiting, and her mother approached me about getting a deposit sent out to the venue they want to hire. The deposit for the venue alone is just over £5,000. I point-blank refused. Whilst the amount isn't an issue, I see no reason on spending any further money on someone who has made it clear they want nothing to do with me, rather than just pay for things. This led to my stepdaughter blowing up at me, claiming I never gave her a chance, and her mother giving me the silent treatment all week. I completely understand where OP is coming from. He has supported her like a dad should, and while she's under no obligation to consider OP a parent, some gratitude would have been the least she could offer. So why should OP put in yet more effort, especially now that she's an adult? OP's stepdaughter, obviously, is treating OP like an ATM, not a dad. It's clear to see how she's in the wrong here. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Bitter Future says, not the a-hole. That's not a great situation. This probably should have been discussed a bit more clearly with your wife at least, if not your stepdaughter, at some earlier point. Nonetheless, your stepdaughter treating you like crap while presuming you will continue to shell out large amounts of money well into her adult years certainly is unreasonable. Twatwagon says, Not the a-hole. Why should you have to fund this adult woman's lifestyle when she isn't even acknowledging everything you've done for her? If anything, why can't her father cough up the cash for his daughter's wedding? I am, however, a firm believer that a couple should pay for their own wedding. Any contribution from a parent should be seen as a gift and not assumed. Lynn Vicious says, Oh my God, not the a-hole. She can get the wedding money from her father. My, 48 female, daughters stopped talking to each other over a man three years ago. I still don't know how to make things better. First, I will admit I showed a great deal of favoritism towards my youngest, Blair, 25 female, while growing up. It wasn't intentional, and by the time I realized my mistake, my oldest, Anna, 27 female, had grown so angry and resentful of her sister. My husband and I played a part in Anna's resentment, and though we tried, Anna never let us get close to her. We spoiled Blair, but we did try to do the best for Anna, but I can't admit we fell short in some places. When Blair came home from her first year of college, she had a boyfriend, John. It was her first love, and Blair was so happy and excited. We were all happy for her, except Anna. But she said nothing to anyone. Life went on until Blair came home crying and accused Anna of sleeping with John. My husband and I didn't want to believe it, but Anna happily admitted to doing it. Worse, she never told Blair. It was back in Blair's first holiday from college, nearly two years ago when Anna had slept with John. She never confessed and willingly let Blair continue to fall in love and move in and get attached to John. When we confronted her, she just said it wouldn't have hurt if Blair found out immediately, that she had hoped Blair found out only after John had proposed and even married her, that after everything we and Blair put her through, she wasn't going to leave us happy. Blair was heartbroken, and that night Anna left our house and never talked to us again. That was three years ago. Blair and John broke up, and the heartbreak deeply affected Blair's studies. Anna never contacted John either. Recently, one of my sister's daughters showed me a post on Facebook. It was Anna. Apparently, she was married and expecting her first child. The post sent Blair into a rage fit. She kept cursing Anna and crying. It seems Anna had finished her studies, gotten a good job, and married a good man, if her posts were anything to go by, and now was having a baby. Anna seems to have it all sorted, but she won't let us in on her life, while she purposely ruined Blair's and got away scot-free. Blair's thoughts. I feel so sad and conflicted. I want to see and make amends with Anna, apologize to her, but I can't leave Blair either. My daughters hate each other, all for a man who cared for neither. What do I do?
how do I reconcile our family? Leanna Van says, if it weren't for the grandchild, would you be wanting a way to get your neglected daughter back in your life? People like you do not see the hurt you put on your child when you pick favorites. Leave your child alone. Throw RA 1006 says, my daughters hate each other, all for a man who cared for neither. No, that is not the reason. It was because you failed Anna as parents. You created this rift between the sisters by favoring one child and dismissing the other. This is all on you. Yes, what she did was awful, but she wanted you to feel a portion of how she has been feeling her entire life. You have all hurt, and she took revenge because of all the pent-up pain and hurt and anger she has had. There's nothing you can do now, except maybe start apologizing to Anna with a text for everything you did, and only time will tell if she would forgive you or even want any contact with you. If not, you respect her this time and let her be happy with her own family. You've hurt her enough.